In the last couple of weeks, I got into an extremely heated debate with a local engineer about GarageBand. The debate was, can GarageBand produce pro-sounding recordings? Now, if you watch this channel all the time, I think you know what I'm going to say. Um, but if you've never watched my channel, stick around because I am going to prove that point that I'm going to make after this little five, six second intro here. I'm going to say this again. I have said it a bunch here on the channel, on my Facebook page, on Instagram, but ultimately, if you sit there, record a song, mix and do all your stuff with it on GarageBand, and at the end of the day, it doesn't sound good, that is not GarageBand's fault, that is your fault, okay? Um, that might be you, there's so many reasons why it might not sound good. But the most fundamental thing you have to get right is at the very beginning. You need to perform your songs properly. If you are not playing the guitar right, if you're not singing properly, if you're not, you know, if you're not performing the song well, that's your fault. That is not GarageBand's fault, okay? Um, if you sit there and you feel like your performance is strong and good, and it's still GarageBand isn't doing what you want at the end of the day, it's still not GarageBand's fault. It's your inability to use GarageBand properly, okay? So let's just get that out of the way. It's all about the performances, the performances, the performances. Next down the line will be your ability to EQ properly, compress properly, and you know, balance the levels amongst the tracks properly. So here on GarageBand and Beyond, every single Monday, I wake up, I write a song, record a song, mix, master it, then I make a video, and then I spit it all out on Monday night partially to prove my point here, that GarageBand can absolutely positively create professional sounding songs. I'm a professional musician. I've been doing this for a very long time. And you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I, I hate to say these kinds of things. It's better to be humble, of course, but um, I put a lot of time, a lot of effort into my work, into the music, into performing my guitar parts properly, the bass parts properly, keyboard parts properly, vocals properly, all of that stuff. I edit the drums down, I play keyboards and all these kinds of things, but it's all done on GarageBand, okay? So I'm gonna take you through a few songs from my Music Monday project. There is a playlist and let's take a look at that. So this is, you know, you go to my main channel page, there's a little tab that says playlists. You're gonna look for Music Monday songs, okay? So we are literally just gonna listen a little bit here. Now I've made 42 of these things. I'm quite proud of that. I started this project back in August. I do have 42 songs here, one cover. I've written a couple of uh, songs with friends and things like that. But the one I wanna start with is called I Got Used to the Abuse because it's by far one of my favorite songs. So we're just gonna get it up here on the screen. So there it is. That's my song. I got used to the abuse. The things that I think about that song that make it interesting and good recording and all that stuff. Of course, I properly recorded the levels, good performances. 
and all of that. But another thing that makes that song really special to me is how simple it is, right? Sometimes I make really complicated songs and we're gonna listen to one of those next. In a song like this, if you're this kind of a songwriter, you know, and you hear us engineers online talking about it all the time, keeping it simple is always gonna make your life easier in the mixing stage. So if you're somebody who likes to add tons and tons and tons of tracks, and then you get down that, you know, final master mix mode um, and you listen to it and you're like, oh gosh, it's all over the place. Remember, maybe you need to remove some elements from your mix to help it really be more clean, have the sound you want. Like for example, if you have a ton of like layered guitar parts that are all playing the same thing, eh, don't do that. That's not great. It's not gonna make anything sound bigger or badder or better. Less is more, especially when it comes to badass guitar tracks, okay? So that's that. Uh, let's listen to the one I just released this week. This one's called Happiness Starts to Unfurl. This was a huge mix for me. Um, this is a very complicated mix. I believe it has 22 tracks on it. And um, so let's get started with this. The thing that made that the biggest challenge for me was my limitation of time. The Music Monday project, everything's gotta be done in one day. So this is a song I certainly would have, you know, loved to have had a week or two to mix, to come back and, you know, nitpick through each single thing, but I didn't. But in one day, I was able to do that. And that's with, you know, some good playing and some, you know, <laughs> expert knowledge of GarageBand. But again, that song, I mean, to me, like, just like that, I've heard people who've gone to professional recording studios and haven't gotten anything that sounds even near as good as that because their performances were off. And I, this is very subjective about music and performances and stuff, but um, ultimately it's the performances. All right, so let's listen to a couple more songs here. We're gonna listen to some rock now. Uh, this is a song called The Comeback that I released on May 14th of 2019. And uh, it's a good solid rock song. It's, you know, sort of with this spinal tap uh, sense of humor behind it. If you do go and listen to this whole song and I'm going to leave links for all of these tracks down below. But um, listen to this solid guitar tracks, man. These are this is some seriously good guitar tone. I was really happy with this one.
All right, so there you go. There's a pretty solid rock song. I think you are starting to understand the versatility of GarageBand and really what you can do with it if you play your parts right, sing your parts right, and mix it right. Um, you can do this, people. GarageBand is absolutely good enough to do it. Last song here, and I've done tons of genres. I've done hip hop, I've done all sorts of things, and maybe I should play a hip hop song. I mean, it's old school hip hop. Let's listen to Hot Sauce. I was, I was thinking about um, Let's All Drive, regular viewers, you know, Let's All Drive. There's a song called Let's All Drive that's a hugely popular one from my Music Monday thing, but right now I'm sitting here thinking, ah, eh, let's hit some hip hop. This is old school 90s hip hop. Uh, that's just sort of, you know, the way this song came out. But um, check this out. This is how I slay. Watch food and H2O, oh, put me a cup of joe. Groove into the doom, call the radio. Shit, I'ma write my own. I hit up my bro. Hell, I'ma swing through the studio. Okay. Oh, this is how we get through the day. This is how we get through the day. This is how we get through the day. This is how we get through I mean, you know. Totally acceptable, fun, 90s-ish hip-hop. I was really proud of that song when it came out. And now that I'm sitting here, I want to do one more song because I think there's one in here uh, that really, uh, every time I listen to it, I'm like, man, that one sounds good. Now, of course, it was generated with a lot of loops uh, that are right out of the GarageBand loop library. And please remember, if you don't know, I do what's called mixed breakdowns of the vast majority of these songs that follows the Monday release, the mixed breakdowns come on Wednesdays. So if you're interested in like how I make these songs, check out the mixed breakdowns because there's a lot of them and uh, they're pretty good and people are liking them and uh, the patrons are paying for them now. And uh, so let's listen to one more song. This one's called Show Me What You've Got. And uh, again, lots of loops, but you know, good vocal performance. I put the loops together in a certain way. There is a mixed breakdown about this song. Uh, so here we go. All right, so that's gonna be the final example that I use. There are a lot of songs out there on YouTube and all over the place. People have recorded a ton of great music on GarageBand. I'm not the only one who believes this, but this video is for those of you who need to help prove the point. And this is also for those of you who are really truly wondering, do I need to switch to Logic? Do I need to switch to Pro Tools? Um, no. If you can't make your song sound good in GarageBand, then no, Logic isn't going to save you. Uh, neither is Pro Tools or any other application. Uh, the results are all about you and your ability to perform the songs 
properly. Uh, really, that's what it boils down to. So you guys, I don't want to talk too much anymore because I think I've proven the point and, um, you know, don't listen to anybody who says GarageBand's not good enough because it is totally good enough. You just have to know what you're doing with it and you have to know the very basics of recording, all of which are covered here on this channel. I have all sorts of videos about recording, microphones, levels, instruments, all sorts of different things you need to know about how to record professional sounding music on GarageBand. It's all here on GarageBand and Beyond. You don't need to go watch anybody else's channel <laughs> about recording on GarageBand, unless you're on iOS. If you're recording on your phone, there's a few other channels out there um, that you should probably be looking at because I don't touch the iOS thing because I'm all dedicated to the OS version, the big boy version. Um, iOS is totally good and the iOS version is really good and you can totally record professional sounding music on your phone if you want to. Um, that's just not how I do it. I, I like the big boy version and uh, I, I should I should stop saying that. That's not very nice. But I like the version I use because I like, uh, you know, I have interfaces and preamps and stuff. It makes it a lot easier to use the Mac version of it than the phone version for the equipment that I have. Anyway, you guys. That wraps it up. I think I proven my point, at least where I stand on that point. If you liked this video, please hit that subscribe button because I put out three videos a week and it would be great if you subscribed. I've been here for 10 years and I'm really, really trying to get that silver play button. The rest of you guys who watch all the videos I make, mwah, mwah, I love all of you. You're the best. I really appreciate your continued support. New patrons, old patrons, you guys are keeping this channel afloat right now and I cannot be more grateful for that. So you guys, that's it. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you, well, no, I'll sing at you on Monday. Peace and love.